The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well we're visiting the new addition out at Milwaukee Tool with the members of IBW 494. So let's get started with the president of Milwaukee Tool, Steve Richmond. Well, Steve, what a great facility here. I'm kind of a history buff, and I, I love all the history when you think of Milwaukee Tools, how far back it goes. Where did it all start? You know, us, Milwaukee Tool, like other companies at this point in time, we made motors. Had to find a home for those motors. And the first place that we found a home was with Henry Ford on the automotive assembly line. But that really isn't our roots. That's not really made us who we are today. And what's most important was post-World War II. That's where we brought really disruptive innovation for the first time to the marketplace, where we changed the game by delivering innovation, which drove solutions on the job site, productivity on the job site across the board, with products like this, our Sawzall, that revolutionized the industry at this point in time. And that's putting it mildly. I would venture to guess that the Sawzall is the most common, most widely used tool on any construction site. If you think of the foundation of the Sawzall, that changed the game on a job site from beginning to end. From a demolition standpoint to a tradespeople, from an electrician, a plumber, mechanical contractor, everybody across the board. Now you use the term disruptive innovation. I love that term. Can you explain what you mean by that? You know, 10 years ago, we really adopted a philosophy that came from a, this Harvard professor named Clayton Christensen. In today's world, that moves so fast that if you just add a feature to a product without understanding what the, the person wants, that end user really wants, you're not gonna change the game. And that's what it was all about. And that's really disruptive innovation and product development. Wow, no wonder you're a company that's continuing to grow, continuing to lead the industry with the professional trades at the roots. And is it fair to say that the key to Milwaukee Tools success is your partnership with the professional trades? Absolutely, that's what we're about. So if you walk throughout this building today and you talk to the people in the halls, if you talk to our engineers, our accounting people, if you talk to our sales people, our job site solution people, all of our marketeers, what you'll hear from them is everybody understands that we are outside in. Nothing comes from the people inside here. It comes from being on the job site and seeing what that electrician is going to do every single day, what that utility worker is going to do, what that mechanical contractor is going to do, and understanding what they do on their job site, what their problems are by observing them, watching them, understanding them, understand how they have come up with substitute processes because of deficiencies in a tool or an accessory or a hand tool, and then for us being able to change that game through our innovation center and our global headquarters here in Milwaukee. Okay, so let's take a case in point. You're out there following along an electrician and you're like, wow, look at he's adapted that tool to make him more productive. How can we help them? How do you turn a product adaptation by an electrician into a reality, something that's a commercialized product that all tradespeople can utilize? Those individuals being on the job site, they revolutionize what happens every single day. We watch them, our concept people, our product managers, our job site solution people. They see what those problems are. They come back here, and then we go through our product development process. And what is that process? Number one, after we identify that problem, we go to our design team, and we come up with a design for that concept. 
we take that design and quickly come up with a CAD drawing from it, and then we go do our rapid prototyping facility in the back. So it's a mini manufacturing facility where in a 24-hour time frame, we could actually prototype a hand tool or an accessory Get or a new power here. tool. 24 hours? 24 hours. Conception to completion, you can have a prototype. For that prototype. Oh and then we gosh. take that prototype back out to the job. And we talk to that electrician and we say, how does this fit your need? What do you believe this will do for you? Is this going to aid in productivity? Is it going to aid in safety? And we continue to make more and more tweaks back to our rapid prototyping facility utilizing the brain power that we have inside this facility until we come up with a new product. And that new product from concept to actual production can be nine months or it can be 18 months. But we clearly believe because of the talent that we have in this building and our relationships with IBEW and the electrician on the job as well as in the training facility that we're better than anybody else in delivering those solutions. Well, it's obvious to me why Milwaukee is the preferred tool of any professional tradesperson out there. And you know, when I think of power tools being cordless and the battery innovations that you guys come up with are just amazing in my opinion. If you think about this, we were the first company in the power tool arena to recognize that lithium technology was going to be able to change the game. So we have more U.S. and global patents than anybody else in this category. And how did we adopt that? Five years before anybody even thought that this was going to be a reality, we set up a separate team working on lithium technology. We actually bought 50% of a battery manufacturer, cylindrical cells, the same kind of cells you would see in a Tesla today, to be able to make the first cells to go in cordless tools. And that led to the launch of V28 many years ago. Today, we're on our seventh generation of lithium technology. And we've combined that lithium technology with new motor technology and new electronic technology to be able to give us tools that have the power, the durability, and outperform everybody in the industry and really can drive solutions. Sure, well I look at it and I look at all this innovation that leads to increased safety as you alluded to, increased productivity, and the end user gets to reap all the rewards of a professionally constructed building. And the future looks bright for Milwaukee Tool. As fascinating as the history is, you guys are adding a huge addition to your facility here. Well, you know what, it is bright. Uh, we are growing. Uh, we are, have gone in the past 10 years from 207 people here to over 1,000 professionals that are driving innovation and productivity and disrupting the marketplace. But it's core that we got to stay a little paranoid. And <laughs> as an organization, we are, because if we don't stay in front of what that electrical contractor wants, if that electrician wants and what their needs are, and continue to offer them solutions and safety and productivity, we won't be the brand of choice 10 years and 20 years and 30 years from now. But our people believe that. We are tied to the trace, and that's what's most important every single day. Well, you know, I'm proud to say Milwaukee is based here in Wisconsin, and it benefits the world as a whole. Thanks for coming on and sharing the history and looking us to the future. Thanks, Jim. Well, Dean, what a magnificent new addition to Milwaukee Tool. And, you know, I just had a chance to catch up with Steve and learn more about the history. And what was amazing to me is the partnership and the appreciation Milwaukee Tool has for the electrical industry, especially IBW 494, with their roots being right here in Milwaukee. It really is a partnership, isn't it? It, it is. It's a great partnership with Milwaukee Tool. They've been around almost 100 years, and they've been a partner since the beginning. They'll come to our training center, give the tools to the apprentices so they can practice on them. They give tools to our journeymen and ask for their recommendation, how to make them better and make our guys more efficient. Well, you know what I really found fascinating is how they will send people out there, their staff out on site to projects like this, and they'll look for adaptations to existing tools or even brand new tools 
and they can rapidly create a prototype. Within like 24 hours, they can have something out there to be tested by the professionals. That's amazing. And so this project right here, it's a huge addition. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. What's going on here is they're putting on a, over 200,000 square foot addition to their existing facility here. We have our great partner, Hunzinger Construction, that's leading this and our on-site electrical contractor, E-Line Electric. Okay, so you have an electrical contractor here, E-Line Electric. Now, you actually provide the labor, the highly skilled workforce for them. Is that how that works? That's correct. We supply all the journeymen, their apprentices, their low-voltage individuals. They all go through our training at our training facility, and they come out here, they're ready to go and sure, make and the customer happy. And, you know, we talk about the importance in the organized trades of the training that is still blows my mind, it's fully funded by your members. That's, that's, that's how important it is to them to be the highly skilled workforce that we value here in Wisconsin. But not only is it important back on site at the training center, but a facility like this that's under construction, it's got to be valuable to the new apprentice. It, it is. One-on-one -on -one training with an experienced journeyman. They're learning the tricks of the trade, how to be efficient and safe on the job site. How's the electrical industry future look as the, far as the future? The your... future is very bright for us. We're growing every year, and we're always accepting applications for our apprenticeship. Well, Dean, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to catch up with you a little later in the show right now. I want to learn more about this magnificent addition out here at Milwaukee School. Thank you. Well, Mike, looks like the guys are hard at work here putting in the electrical service. I wanted to have you on and catch up with you with all your knowledge to explain the electrical service in a building like this. Sure. Well, power in this situation, which is kind of unique, is coming from the existing building. And it comes into our main distribution panel that is right here. So right now our guys are starting to tie together the bus bars to link the three individual pieces of this equipment. So power is going to come in on this side, and then from here, it'll go out to the rest of the building. And so, you know, to analogize with a homeowner out there, this is just like an electrical panel on steroids. I mean, it's just a huge service. Right, like a normal household is around a 100 amp panel. Yep. This one happens to be 3,000 amps. Wow. Which is going to be amps. more than enough to handle anything they want to put in this building. Okay, and so getting back to it, you said they're tying into their existing electrical at the original building. And you said that's rather unique, rather than bringing in its own proprietary service? Right. In a normal situation, in a new construction, you would have We Energies bring in its own power straight from the power company, would have its own meter. In this situation, because we already had the service there, they've got their meters, they're all set. We're just bringing in new power to suffice for their new building. Sure. Now you use the term bus bar here. What exactly is a bus bar? So the bus bar is a copper bar that is connected to our cables and then from the cables to the bus bar, from the bus bar to the breakers. It's carrying the electricity. So instead of a, a wire like you were used to, yep. this is an actual copper bar. Oh, and so it kind of gets distributed into multiple different panels here instead of just one? Correct. And there's all sorts on the other side here. We're looking at the back of it. On the other side, there's all sorts of different breakers that are going to go throughout the rest of the building. Okay, and you know, I, I touched on with Dean that what a great opportunity for not only journey workers, but for the journey workers to pass on their knowledge to apprentices here. Do you have several apprentices working? Oh, absolutely. This is a good situation right here. Jeff is a journeyman electrician, and he's pretty much showing Porfu, who is a apprentice. And he's learning. Obviously, he's in the gear right there, so he's learning how to put together this piece of equipment. And there's no substitute for real-world experience. That's what I've learned doing all these Building Wisconsin shows with the trades. Okay, so from here, I assume it gets distributed out throughout the structure. Can we go take a look at that? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, Stu, now we're on the fourth floor, and this is the sub-panel, which is being fed from that main distribution panel we saw downstairs. Sure, it's a little more recognizable to me, more like, a, you know, maybe not a 200-amp panel, but something I would see at home. Right. In here, we're going to have all the small breakers, and anybody can come and turn on and off if they need to be working on something or something happens. Okay, so every floor will have one of these, or could there be multiple ones? No, every floor is actually going to have four of these sub-panels, oh, and that's wow. just for the 120 volts, which would be for outlets and such. We also have different panels for lighting. We have panels for fire alarm. We have 
panels for lighting control. There's a, a bunch of different things involved in this. You know, it sounds like there's a lot more that goes into the electrical than just simply running electrical lines. I mean, must all start with design and you guys have to be able to read plans and understand all that? It takes years of practice to be able to look at a print and understand everything that's on that print and then be able to make it happen in the real world and have a full functioning building based off of the knowledge you have reading a print. Sure, my mind doesn't work that well at visualizing it, so if I look at a two-dimensional plan, I'm like, how the heck is that gonna work? But I know that they had some interesting attributes they were incorporating in here, namely, as I recall, they didn't have a ceiling, right? So that's gotta be challenging to run all the piping for the electrical. And this is a very unique building because there are no ceilings in here. They want the open construction look. They want to see our pipes. They want to see the duct work. They want to see all that stuff. Cool. So our stuff has to look perfect. We can't have raggedy bends or anything looking bad because everybody's going to be looking at it. Wow. Well, let's go down and take a look at the end point, maybe in somebody's office to see where they're going to have access to the electrical. So what's going on in this office? Right here, Marion is taking that power we saw from the sub panels and he's starting to pipe the lighting. Wow, are you using laser technology here? Well, like I said before, because this is an open concept and you can see everything, we have to be perfect. So we are using lasers to set all the boxes. Sure, it's gonna all be exposed. It's gonna look beautiful and it's done. And you know, earlier we were talking about the intricacies of the electrical trade. And here's a great example of the intimate knowledge you need of the plan. Look at this. This is just crazy uh, what you need to know to be an electrician in the modern world. On these plans, it's not just our electrical. You can see that our lights and our outlets are on here, but we also have to incorporate all the other trades. So we have the duct work, we have the plumbing. We have to coordinate that with every trade so we're not in each other's ways. Okay, now over here, is this one of your members? Yeah, this is Mike. He's doing something similar to what Marion was doing, but instead of piping the lighting, he's actually bringing power down to the outlets and the switches. And you know, I commented on understanding the plans, but here's a real world application. Look at the intricacy. He's got to bend that. He's got to understand math. He's got to understand, like you said, trigonometry, all the angles. Is this pretty much every day on the job they're doing stuff like that? Absolutely. It takes a lot of practice to be able to work one of the benders. Now, obviously, you see him tweaking that with his arms and hands, but on the lift there, you're going to see the bender, and it's not easy to be understand how that bender works. You just can't throw a piece of pipe in there, and it's going to come out right. You need to know your math to make sure that your lengths are dead nuts perfect. And this is something that someone entering the electrical field, they should be well-versed in math. Absolutely. It's a very important part of our job. You know, I look at a structure like this, big open floor plan, but a lot of offices on the outside. Again, I try to analogize it back to my home setting. Is there going to be one breaker per office? Pretty close. It might actually be two offices per breaker, but there's also going to be different breakers for lighting. Uh, and then all of a sudden your, your data has got a whole a different setup. Okay, and along those lines, what exactly is there as far as wiring in each office? It's always growing and it's always changing, so we got to stay ahead of the game. So, you know, the old Cat 5 that used to come to your data outlets, well, that's almost non-existent. Now you're at Cat 6, and it's getting very complicated. Wow, and so you have the data lines, you have electrical for traditional outlets, and then you have the lighting that goes in here. Does that pretty much wrap it up? Well, yeah, that's pretty much close. When power comes down into one of the switches, and then we use something that's called MC, which is very durable but very flexible. It's very easy to use. It's common practice in today's construction for electricians now. So these are obviously wrapped because of the metal studs, is that why? Correct. So the wire is inside of this, and it's protected by this metal cabling. Well, you know, it's awesome to see the skeleton of a structure under construction. It's just an honor to be able to come out here, work with professionals like yourself. How long have you been an electrician? I've been 13 years. Yeah, you're pretty happy with your career choice? Oh, uh, I love what I do. Yeah, I can tell. It just resonates with you. And, you know, it's been a great opportunity for us to visit the Milwaukee Tool Edition and see behind the scenes and get a, just a slight feel for the training that it takes to do it with the perfection that we're seeing out here. I just love it. How long until this is gonna be done? Uh, like I said, about two or three more months yet. And you're happy with how it's coming together? It's coming perfect. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Thanks for coming on Building Wisconsin today. Thank you.
Would you like to make more money and have better benefits? Be part of a network of skilled trade professionals who are trained to the highest standards. Have access to continuing education, high paying jobs, and even career advancement? If it all sounds too good to be true, then stop by, call, or visit the IBEW 494 website to learn about the apprenticeship opportunities that await you. Working together with our NECA contractors, IBEW electricians start their apprenticeship with a decent pay wage and over the next five years receive raises, trainings, and all the benefits of being a member of IBEW. So make your move today and join the 494 team of professionals who are proud to be building Wisconsin. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and so far in today's show we've been learning more about the electrical work going on at the new addition here at Milwaukee Tool. Now let's continue with the business manager for IBEW 494, Dean Warsh. Well, Dean, it's been great on today's show, learning more about the electrical trade out at that new addition at Milwaukee Tool. And now we're down here at the training center for the electricians. Tell us a little bit about this. This is our training facility for all of our apprentices, our continuing education for our journeymen to keep their state licenses up to date. This is a facility that was put together with a great collaboration between labor and management. It wouldn't be possible otherwise. And so if someone's interested in becoming an electrician, this is ultimately where they're going to be trained? That's correct. All our apprentices, no matter if it's a low voltage, residential, or commercial inside, this is where they come to do their apprenticeships. Okay, and what I'm learning in the show is there is a lot of partnering going on, not only between you and companies like Milwaukee Tool, but all those signatory contractors out there. And that's what you're saying is when we talk about who pays for a facility like this, it's a partnership? Correct. It's paid for by the IBW and our contractors, NECA the over 100 contractors I talked about earlier. There's no government funding in this. So at the end of the day, this magnificent training facility is really a collaboration between your signatory contractors and your members, and ultimately, we all benefit here in the state of Wisconsin with a higher quality of life. Yeah, that's correct. Our retirees a long time ago teamed up with the contractors to make sure everybody was trained to the best of their ability. Well, I appreciate you coming on today's show. I'm anxious to catch up with you in future shows to learn more about the electrical trade. Right now, I want to catch up with Dan Large to learn more about becoming an electrician through that apprenticeship program. It's been a pleasure, Stu. Thank you. Well, Dan, it's been a fascinating show learning all about the different levels of electrical work that go on just in a, a project like we saw it at Milwaukee Tool. And now I wanted to catch up with you to learn more about the apprenticeship process. And if there's a viewer out there today or somebody knows someone who wants to become an electrician, how do you get the ball started? You'd walk into our Milwaukee office and uh, ask for an application. Or you can go online and request an application there and actually download it and fill it out. Or you'd be able to call and we will we'll send it out to you so that you can uh, fill it out and get it back to us. Okay, so it starts with an application process. You simply fill that out, but then there must be some requirements there, at least some initial ones, before you can actually come in and get started. Our minimum requirement, you have to be 18 years of age. You have to have a high school diploma or a GED. And then we also have probably our bigger one is our math requirement, which is two years of high school level math. One must be algebra 
and they both must be C or better. And you know, a lot of kids cringe at the thought of math and why am I ever going to need this? But boy, I saw it firsthand out there at Milwaukee Tool and just in the pipe bends alone, the different angles that are there. And if someone needs to brush up on that, I mean, that's something that as long as they have some experience at it, you guys are going to help them through the apprenticeship process, learn math. Absolutely. Most of what you need for us is you get that in high school, you get that background, and then we just help you get yourself back up to where you need to be for us. So much of our work, so much of the stuff that we do involves math. Math. And so we need to have that minimum competence. Sure. There. So I'm confident that I have enough math. What's the next step? I mean, are, do you need to have a driver's license and some other things? Like we that? do. We, you need a driver's license and the ability to get job to job. So, so many times uh, you'll get pulled off of one job in the middle of the day and sent to another job. So you have to have the ability to get, uh, get around our, our jurisdiction. Okay. So you get through the initial steps. You're pretty excited. You get to become an electrician, at least start the process. What's involved in the apprenticeship program? Well, the apprenticeship program is a five-year program, and the first three semesters, you go to school one day a week, which you're paid for, and one night a week, and then the rest of your apprenticeship, basically, you work the five days, and you go to school two nights a week. Boy, and you know, people ask about getting into the trades, and it's like, why wouldn't you want to? I mean, compared to college, there's nothing wrong with college, but you have to pay for it. Here, right. you're getting paid to learn. Right. You're getting paid to be taught a profession. And it's a hands-on trade that you get to see the fruits of your labor and be proud of what you build. So to me, it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. In some cases, it's the best kept secret. You get to get out in the field. You get your hands-on training there. And your classwork here, along with what you see on the walls in our classrooms, is you get the book and some hands-on and be able to go out in the field and then just be able to, to go from there. And the sky's the limit, and as I understand and I learned on today's show, there's a big calling for electricians out there. Oh, there really is. If you want to be an electrician, now's the time. We're taking bigger classes than we've taken probably in the last 10 years, and the call and the work is out there. Well, Dan, I appreciate you coming on. Just touching on the apprenticeship program, I look forward to catching up with you in future shows to learn more in depth. Absolutely. I can't wait. Thanks. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Cut.